Okie doke. Well, I think everybody's here that is supposed to be here. Um, Natalie, the shirt kind of gave you away. Is it the same shirt as in my picture? Well, I, no, well, it says archery. Oh. So. Yeah. Uh, Chloe. Yeah. Okay. Serenity. Uh, Teresa's not here. Uh, Cindy. Wait. Sydney, that's what I said. You just, you know, it's the mask thing. You just can't. Yeah, yeah. Sydney, okay. Katie. Uh, Shoke. Shack. Shack. It is Shack. Wow, that's like uh, German pronunciation. Or yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, Justin. Uh, Alexis, okay, okay, so I'm going to go with uh, Allison, and that's uh, Stilgenbauer, yep. okay, great, and Kaylin, okay, and uh, Stogsdall, okay, and Carleen. All right, so uh, smaller classes, it's a little bit easier, but some of it, you know, like you're wearing, you're not wearing glasses here, or you are wearing glasses here, and then not, not you know. Um, but the, you know, the mask thing, it's a little hard to recognize people. But uh, with the smaller classes, it's, it makes it uh, a lot easier. Uh, okay, so, um, yeah. Like nearly, you know, well, over half of module one is done now as far as time, right? And we're just getting to meet. So this is going to be, you know, a little weird. Um, the big thing is that uh, um, don't be shy about asking questions, uh, certainly here, uh, but also in, uh, uh, you know, through email, that kind of thing. Uh, email is probably the best way to get a hold of me. Um, uh, but I, you know, I'm not going to go through like syllabus stuff or anything like that. I mean, if you have any questions, I'd email me about that. But with with only getting together for you know 50 minutes a week, um, we want to try to get to more important things. But if you do have questions, that's probably the most important thing. You know, so so pretty much I'll open things up to questions when we first get in. Uh, anything that you have there, and then um, when we're done with questions, I'll move on, you know, because I can always talk. I got plenty to talk about, so um, I, I can always uh, keep going after questions. Um, I have a question, though. So, how many of you can bring a laptop to class if you? if you wanted to. All right. Is that everybody? Yeah, it looks like everybody. Okay, so that's, um, so I, you have to check with one person who's not here, but, um, but it also occurs to me that that might be, as we get moving in the semester, that might be a great use of this time, is if there are no real questions, and, and I don't feel a great need that I have to, you know, say something in particular uh, that I haven't, say, put on a video or something like that. Um, you could be working on a project, you know, your project, and, and um, that way I can go around and, and kind of answer questions on that while you're working on it and, and answer questions to the whole class as you're working on it. Um, so in the in the future, yeah, you might want to go ahead and bring your laptop. Um, now, and and I'm recording this uh, Tuesdays. Uh, I actually have somebody who's not here, and so I do the Google Meet thing and all that. And and um, 
but a different, actually it was because of a different student in a different class, uh, was asking about recording it and, and so forth. And I, and I thought, you know, as long as we've got all this stuff up and going, I might as well uh, record it um, because at any given moment, somebody might get quarantined or, or something like that. And so if I'm just used to recording it, um, I might get better at it as I, as I go on. Who knows, maybe not. Uh, but I, it is going a little smoother for me. Like I figured out on this camera, when I, when I first plugged it into this thing, it did the raw camera feed, which I don't know if anybody knew this, but raw video feed to, to computers is actually really green. I had no idea. You know, it was just coming through very green, and I thought, I know I removed the little thing in front of, you know, because that was another possibility, right? It had a little plastic protector in front of it, but I, I had already removed that. Um, but then, it, it, even up there, it looks slightly green, but that's the projector. It doesn't look that way on my screen. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I had to figure that out, and uh, so, like I say, things are getting a little smoother. Um, and let's see. And so, with that, I will ask, does anybody have any questions right now on anything? Okay, I guess that's a no. All right, well, so... Um, some things I, you know, these, pretty much anything I have to say in here is already on a video somewhere, I think, most of the, you know, if I, if I get all, if I get to all that and am able to, I know for the first, uh, this first module, pretty much anything I might have to say is already on a video, um, but, you know, I might say it a little differently here, or you might have a question as I say something, and, and so, you know, I'll hit a couple of the high points that I just, I know people have trouble with, and, um, you know, and that's the thing with this course is, uh, in some ways, you know, it's, it's one of these things that kind of once you get the idea, which sadly can take like two and three semesters of, of this stuff. I mean, it's just kind of the way it is. Um, but once you get the idea, you kind of go, oh, well, yeah, this makes sense. Why was that ever a problem? But until you get the idea, it is a problem. You know, I, it, this is a, what I'll call a challenging course. And I just base that on the fact that lots of very bright people, you know, have taken this course or one like it you know, not necessarily from me, but just in general, um, people can have difficulty with this, with inferential statistics. And, um, and like I say, once you, once you kind of get the big idea of it, it seems quite reasonable and, and straightforward, but for whatever reason, it can take a while to get that big idea. Um, now, some of the things, you know, vocabulary is important. And um, so one of those things is variables. And part of the reason this is really important in this class is that um, once we hit module three, then kind of with each module, we just keep solving the same problem over and over again. Okay? We just do it a bunch of times, well, what's the difference? You know, I mean, why do we keep doing that? Well, you know, maybe because it's too hard to do anything else, I don't know, but, but no, that's, it's, it's because um, we want to, we want you to realize that um, you'll see all these different tests, you know, people will talk about linear regression, they'll talk about chi-square analysis, they'll talk about analysis of variance, and logistic regression and all these different things. But what you, what you really want to get is actually they're all the same thing. They're all really asking the same question and trying to answer the same basic question. But the difference is what are your data like? What kind of variables are they? And, and so to, to have that vocabulary and to, 
to realize that as we go through these different modules, all we're really changing is the kind of variable we're looking at. Uh, I hope that can kind of help get this big idea of, of uh, inferential statistics across. So numerical, um, the, the numerical variables, what I like to do, kind of an intuitive way to look at that is um, it makes sense uh, to take their average. People in here, you know, we've got people in here who are uh, interested in nursing. Uh, we have some people interested in things like pharmacy and, and medicine and dentistry and, and that sort of thing. Um, and then we just have possibly bi biological researchers. And I don't remember which group it's in, but we also have uh, a, an accountant. Anybody in here the accountant person? No. Okay. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, I'll talk about something like temperature. You know, my, right, we're supposed to take our temperature each day, that kind of thing. Um, that's numerical, and it makes sense to talk about an average body temperature, you know, something like that. You know, I take my temperature today, I take it tomorrow, I take it the next day. You know, on the, on the average, what do, you know, what's kind of my baseline average body temperature? And um, that makes sense. It's a numerical variable. On the other hand, wearing a red shirt. I think I wore a green one on Tuesday. It doesn't really make sense to ask what's the average color of my shirt. Not numerical. Okay. Now, for those of you in, uh, who really like, say, chemistry or physics or something like that, well, you may realize, right, that actually color is a wavelength, and if I looked at it as wavelength, then all of a sudden I could talk about a numerical variable. But um, generally speaking, when we're talking about something like uh, the color of the shirt or the type of shirt, you know, it's a button, button down, right? It's not a pullover or something like that. You know, what's the average shirt type, right? That doesn't make any sense. And, and so, you know, numerical, if it would make sense to take the average, um, then uh, we'll call it numerical. And then within that, uh, we have continuous. And actually, most of our uh, numerical variables will tend to be continuous, I think. Uh, they just because uh, we're measuring like length or temperature or um, amount of light or something like that. Uh, dosage, right, the dosage of a medication. You know, those all um, are continuous in that really um, you could measure them to any order of uh, precision. You know, something's eight centimeters long, it's 8.3 centimeters long. It's 8.342 centimeters long, right? And, and if, if I've got something that can measure it that well, I can just keep going. And, and so, you know, continuous stuff, it, it is a continuum. There are numbers all through a space. And uh, you know, so in math terms, it would be the real numbers. And, um, you know, but again, a very intuitive way, I think, to kind of think of con con uh, continuous numbers is, is that, you know, it, I could go with any order of precision. It might be really silly um, to do that. You know, like, how old are you? Well, you could take it down to the, like the nanosecond if you wanted to, right? You know, but it would start getting silly at that point. Um, and then discrete. So, 
So that one actually, it's, it's a little bit tougher to really say what discrete numbers are in, um, I think, just uh, what we call layman terms. Um, so I'm going to go with something that is a bit more technical, uh, is that we can line them up uh, with counting numbers. Okay, so if, if for whatever reason I was measuring something that I could go in half intervals, like, you know, it's zero, it's a half, it's one, it's one and a half, it's two, it's two and a half, and so forth, well, I could still line those up with the counting numbers of one, two, three, four, five, you know, because there was a first one, there was a second one, there was a third one, and I can definitely tell you what those are. You know, there's, there's, um, uh, you know, they, they're numbers, they're numerical, it would make sense to take the average. You know, so even if I were talking about um, ages in whole years, you know, like, oh, somebody's 21, somebody's 26, somebody's 19, you know, that kind of thing. Well, you could still, it would make sense to talk about the average age and get a fraction in there, some kind of decimal number. Um, but, you know, they're discrete if we want to hold ourselves to spacing between the numbers. Okay, so uh, the easiest is like one, two, three, four, five. Uh, but, you know, it, it turns out if you talk about the rational numbers, fractions, I mean, real life fractions like two thirds and so forth, those you can actually line up with the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and so forth too. Seems kind of weird, but you can. And, and so they're also discrete. Um, but uh, uh, it's, it's actually a little weirder to come up with many examples of, of this. Probably about the best is age, that we just, we talk about age, but we, we don't tend, unless you're like five years old, right? You know, a five-year-old, it, oh, it's very important that they're five and a half. Right, you know, or, or five, almost six, you know, or you ask, a, a, you know, some five year, you know, how old are you? I'm almost six, right? You know, to them it really matters, but like to me, no, it doesn't matter. And, and so, you know, we tend to go with our whole numbers, our counting numbers with ages, and uh, so we just kind of lump ourselves into, into those, and so those would be discrete in that way. Okay. Um, now, so if it's not numerical and more like colors or something like that, it's categorical. And, well, kind of like the root says there, it's categories. And again, things like um, you know, colors. But other things like month of the year, um, they can get a little weird. Okay, because, you know, you could say, well, which month? And you, oh, well, May, August, something like that. And that sounds very categorical, it sounds like categories. But I could also talk about month one, month two, month three, right, and not give them a name. Well, or the name is one, two, three, that kind of thing. And, and so there are some kind of weird categorical uh, variables, and so this is under categorical, and um, the weird ones are ordinal. Okay. And so those are categories, but uh, they do have an order. And so sometimes it can be a little weird 
Um, so you take age, right? We could, we could go with age and really split up the time. We could talk about age as a continuous variable. More likely, we would tend to talk about age as a discrete variable. But you also hear things like, oh, young adult, elderly, senior, right, adolescent, all these different things. Well, those are age groups. Ah, they have a definite order to them, right? Uh, an infant is younger than a toddler who's younger than, I don't know, what's next? Child, just a gen generally speaking, a child, I don't know, school age child. Uh, um, but though they, they're younger, right, and, and keep getting older, you've got the adolescents, uh, you've got things, you know, other labels that could overlap some of these things, like preteen. The heck is that, right? You know, and and uh, um, so they could have an order to them, but they really are categories. Okay, so um, they have an order, but it it doesn't really make sense in those cases to talk about an average, right? So if I say um, you know, even if I said something like, oh, there were five teenagers and, um, uh, you know, three, uh, whatever it be next, young adults or something like that, you know, how do you take the average of that? Is the average of that um, a, a, a teen adult? That would maybe be me. I operate maybe on that level a lot of the time. Um, right, you know, but, but if you're going to use those groups to talk about the average of those groups, it doesn't actually make sense. And so even though there's an order to them, um, they're arbitrary. You know, we've, we've set those groupings sort of arbitrarily, and, um, and so this, this idea of average doesn't quite work out. Um, sizes, small, medium, large you know, extra small, extra large, those kinds of things, uh, those are all ordinal. Because they have a definite order to them, but they're not really numerical. And then uh, finally, uh, nominal. And actually, when I write sort of my intuitive understanding here, I'm not writing anything new. I'm actually writing the definition of nominal um, in name only. So that stuff, no order to it. Again, generally speaking, things like uh, color, no order to it whatsoever. Um, and, uh, and so it's really just name only. And, uh, but that is what nominal means. And um, I kind of like to point that out in a quantitative class like this where we talk about things like average and median and, and all that. Nominal uh, truly is in name only. It's not average. And a lot of times you'll read things where people use the word nominal as average. And, and that's just, it's incorrect. Um, so, for instance, um, I do a lot of woodworking types of things at times, uh, when I have time. And so you go to the, uh, you go to Lowe's or something like that in Campbellsville and uh, you buy a two by four. That's a nominal name, okay? Because none of its dimensions are two inches or four inches or anything like that. It's actually an inch and a half by three and a half inches, but we call it a two by four uh, in name only. So nominally, it's a two by four. Definitely not average. I mean, that's that's above its average. Its averages would be around one and a half and three and a half. Um, so yeah, that's the our other kind of categorical variable, and. Uh, and as we go through the course, um, we, we have these other variables, right? So we've got that, but then we also have 
uh, explanatory and response variables. So much of what we do in this class, this is kind of what we're interested in. Uh, we're, we're pretty much the problem in this class is to decide whether there's some kind of dependent relationship between two variables. Okay, so again, going with the health thing, um, uh, 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 a number that I really don't like because I, I don't think it's, it, it's got too much uh, variance in it, and, and that's, um, oh, what the heck is that? Uh, our, I can't even think of what the name of it is. Um, uh, I don't know. The, um, they take your height and weight, do something with them, and BMI. B, BMI, yeah, body mass index. That's what it is. Thank you. Um, yeah, I don't really like body mass index because um, it just it, it's too wide a number. Uh, you know, like I'm actually kind of small boned, so I've been. Uh, a lot lighter than people might have thought I was, and uh, um, whereas you know I have I have one daughter who has um, pretty large you know so like you can measure here with calipers or something and and you get these much larger distances, um, but in the end, body mass index does have some reasonably reliable uh, dependency uh, or a dependent relationship, a reasonably reliable dependent relationship with um, you know, other things like diabetes and, and so forth, other health concerns. And, and so it's used. It's a very quick and easy number to calculate, and so people use it. Um, but, you know, like I say, I, I don't really like it as a number, but um, uh, uh, we can say there is that dependent relationship there, and so you can use it to help you tell whether somebody's more at risk at, uh, you know, for various things. And you know, that's great stuff to be able to do that, to be able to measure one thing and tell you about something else, right? And, and you're used to that, okay? Pretty much, I'm guessing everybody took some sort of standardized test of some kind uh, at some point to get into a school. So like, to come here, you probably took an ACT or an SAT at some point. Uh, if you're an international student, you might have taken the TOEFL. Um, I don't know other other things. If you you know if you're part of the international baccalaureate system, you had to take various exams. Um, you know to to set at different levels. And all those are proxies, really. You know, I mean, why why an ACT? What the heck's going on there? Well, because they've been able to show a reasonably good uh, predictive quality of the ACT and whether a person's going to make it through four years of college. Now, actually, they're moving away from it. And uh, last spring, I had to do a little study of math majors because we, you know, we study our departments and so forth. And so we were, we were doing our self-study of math and um, pretty much uh, it looked like ACT had very little to do with whether a person was going to make it as a math major or not. Um, GPA, high school GPA had a lot more to do with it. And I think that's what they're finding more and more. Because uh, if, if you ever hear some of the advertisements from various schools or read the news, you'll see that a number of schools are starting to do away with uh, like ACT requirements or graduate schools, some of them are doing away with 
uh, the graduate record exam as, as part of the entrance requirement. Not all by any means, but you know, it's, it's slowly kind of moving that way. And, well, why? Well, because at one point there seemed to be a pretty good dependency thing. Uh, you know, we could predict one thing from the other reasonably well, and now not so much. So it's of no use anymore. And that's what this class is about, is, is sort of looking to see, well, if I know something about, what, you know, like if I know the sun is shining or not, that may change my prediction as to whether it's warm outside or it's raining or something like that. You know, certainly if you tell me it's raining, unless I'm in Hawaii, I'm probably going to guess it's not sunny. Now, I did find my brother was stationed at Pearl Harbor for a few years, and I visited him once. They actually, I, it's raining, right? I'm looking around. I couldn't find a cloud anywhere. It was raining. It's weird. A lot of humidity. So, um, uh, okay. So that's, we want this explanatory response. Explanatory, we're going to use that maybe to predict the response or just to ask, do we think there's something going on there? And so with that, what we see is, well, here's explanatory. Here's response. And then if we look at the variable types, um, the explanatory variable uh, could be categorical. Uh, the response variable could be categorical. Module 3. That's what's happening in Module 3. We're asking this question about dependency between two variables in uh, Module 3, but those variables are both categorical. And then um, it could be that uh, the explanatory variable is categorical, but the response variable is numerical. And in that case, oh, we look at module four. Then, well, explanatory variable could be numerical. And the response variable could be numerical, in which case we have module 5. And then, actually, module 6 kind of, um, the first part of module 6, the part we're most interested in, actually sort of combines the three of these and says, well, what if you have a, a problem that's got a mixture? Oh, yeah, that could be a problem. Um, and, uh, it, but it also, in module six, uh, sorry, module, wait, module, oh, I'm off, sorry. I was doing chapters, not modules. See, because we do chapter one and two different modules. This is actually module four, five, six. I knew it, uh, the chapter module not matching. Uh, this is the first semester I've done this where they don't match. Um, I think you should be happy. Uh, you just don't know it yet. Maybe you'll never know it. But um, uh, And then, so here, uh, in this final case, we, we do hit some things in Module 7. We actually won't really look at um, this particular case very much. We'll talk about it, but you won't, you won't do a project based. You'll do a project in Module 7, but it will be um, based more on combining these three 
modules than it will be on uh, doing the categorical response with a numerical uh, variable. The problem is here, we don't, we don't if, if we had software that just did this really easily, um, I'd go ahead and, and have us do more with it uh, as far as this case. But um, I don't think we have really good software for it. So uh, it, it just, you know, then the, the algebra and the mathematics and the calculus and so forth, you'd have to, do, it, it just is more than you want to do. And, and so you lose, you kind of lose what's going on in all the calculations and, and that's just not what I'm trying to do in this course, okay? But this is, this is kind of how it goes is, um, so uh, this is chapter three, this is chapter four, chapter five, and then chapter six. And, uh, and so when we hit those, that's what they're doing. Any questions at this point? Anything? You know, I would like to believe it's because everything is so clear and it's been put out there so well. But of course, I always just assume it's because you didn't even, you, you know, you lost me at hello or something like that. But, um, okay, so um, that's the big stuff on variables and why we care. Uh, and, and like I say, the, it matters a lot in that if, if you can kind of remember with each chapter or each module as we move along that, oh yeah, we're just, we're solving the same darn problem again. And, um, you know, but we're, we're using different data. Now, a, a nice way to, to do that would actually be uh, if the text went in reverse, I think it would, be in some ways a little easier, uh, but it doesn't. And you know, I've done that sort of thing with classes where I went, oh, well, let's start in chapter seven, you know, and then go to chapter four, and then go to, no. And talk about just a disaster when you do that sort of thing. I've tried it a couple different times in, in a couple different courses, and it just, it never seems to work. So, it's, you know, you kind of find a text that is pretty much what you need and, and you go with it. And, and so, to kind of go with this progression, um, you know, what one might do is, is let's just go with uh, um, uh, something like, uh, you know, uh, very simple, like height and weight of a, you know, of some sort of animal doesn't have to be human, right? Um, and, and pretty much what you would expect if we were doing everything numerically, you know, if this is height and this was weight, you know, what we would tend to probably see is that, you know, um, say I'm doing giraffes, Right, as, as the height of the giraffe goes up, probably its weight does as well. Right? It's, it won't be perfect by any means, but we would expect to see data that looks something like that. And that, visually speaking, that says, hey, I think there's a dependency between height and weight. Because if you tell me the height's down here, I'm going to predict a smaller weight. If you tell me the height's up here, I'm going to predict a bigger weight. Yeah, my, my choice of height or, or whatever I'm doing with the height, if you tell me something about height, that will change my prediction of the weight. Oh, there's a dependency. And I can see that visually in a scatter plot, just if the scatter plot's tipped up or tipped down, looks like there's a, some sort of dependency. Because I would pick something different uh, for my guess for the weight if the, if the height were different. So, um, 
you know, if, if it were straight across, though, you see, no matter what the height was, I guess I'd pick about whatever that average weight was in there and, and just go with it. It wouldn't change, so there is no dependency. Um, so here I can see a dependency. So that, that's that sort of thing. Two numerical variables. Now, though, if um, I want to go back up to module 5, where the response is numerical, well, that's the weight is the response. Um, the explanatory is categorical. Oh, well, how could I make this categorical? Oh, easily. What I do is I just split it like this, and I record my data as, um, you know, maybe uh, uh, short, uh, medium, tall, you know, something like that. And instead of having ordered pairs of heights and weights, you know, my data in this case would actually be, you know, I'd have a column of small, and then I'd have a weight one, a weight two, and a weight three. And so if that's actually how I found my data, um, its picture would look more like this. Um, so, you know, I just, I guess I'd go with maybe small there, or short, or whatever I said, and medium and tall, you know, I'd do something like that. And then if I were to plot the weights, well, they're, you know, these weights are all for short, and, and so as I kind of look there, I would have, you know, a bunch of dots like this, and then medium, oh, they'd be, a bunch of dots in there, and then tall, they would be a bunch of dots here. Huh. But you see, it's the same trend. Same thing. Now, in this case, right, this is ordinal, right, small, medium, tall, or short, medium, tall. Um, that's ordinal. So it made sense that I talked about a trend. Now the thing is, with real life categories, right, it could be these are just nominal, in which case then to make this picture no longer makes sense. Because why should I go SMT? Why not just go in alphabetical order or something, right? If, if there's not actually a real order to them, just plot them in alphabetical order. Now I won't see that trend. So here, you know, it's, it's that if I went from a numerical variable like this and turned it into an ordinal uh, categorical variable, then you see these two pictures really line up. Okay? And that's the point, though, is that I could have exactly that kind of data here, in which case I would get an answer. And actually, the answers would be usually pretty similar. And that's, um, that's actually something we'll do in like module five is we'll categorize the numerical data and resolve it like we did in module four. And the idea, you know, why am I making you do that? Well, because it's just fun to make you work. No, you know, I'm, I'm asking you to do that because I want you to realize they're the same darn thing, right? This module and this module, same darn thing, just different kinds of variables. And, and so, you know, we can have something like this. But then, for the weight, we could also have uh, small, medium, large, or something like that for weight, or whatever you would do, you know, light, middle weight, heavy weight or something, lightweight, middleweight, heavyweight, like we do in, in boxing or wrestling or something like that. And so, back here, I could, you know, do something like that, like light, middle, heavy. And what I would do at that point, then, is you're not talking about um, numerical values anymore. Everything is a count of a category. And so I would make a table. 
And so this is module four, so uh, I should put module five here and module six there. So in module four, I would take that same basic data, but now I would have this table of uh, something that looked like this. And usually on a table, I put these up here now instead of down there. Uh, but what you see is, right, oh, that one has zero, that one has zero, that one has zero. And, you know, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five. Um, you know, so maybe there are five there, three there, uh, a bunch here, so, I don't know, 12, who knows, uh, two there, uh, a bunch up here, maybe that's 10, and it looked like a couple there. But when you look at this table, actually, if you realize what it's doing as far as counting, it, it's giving me the same information I had in that very first numerical plot. I can still see, you know, from this, I can still see that trend from there to there. Now, again, with, with nominal categorical data, well, there might be a trend like that, but I wouldn't expect it, so to speak. I, you know, I wouldn't expect up or down or anything. I would just expect different, right? So if, if it didn't matter what order I did these in, I could switch columns, which would no longer give me this maybe nice trend like that, but the rows would still look different from each other the columns would still look different from each other. So, you know, just like here, if I swap those two, all of a sudden the trend's going down. But that's not the real point here. The point is that column looks different than that column looks different than that column. That's the point. And, and in the end, that's what you're seeing here, right? This end looks different from that end. And then, same thing here, you know, the, the rows or columns look different. You know, if I just swap those two, right, I could have 2, 12, 0, uh, 0, 3, 5, and 10, 2, 0. Well, you know, no longer, if, I, if I'm trying to see a trend, it sort of goes like that. Well, you know, that's sort of silly. Um, now, I mean, real life data might look like that. It might be a quadratic or something that's that's doing that. But uh, but if it's truly nominal data, then it really didn't matter what order I put those columns in. But the key here is, if I look here, the middle of this one is by far bigger than the two ends. Whereas here, the top of this one is by far bigger than the the middle or the bottom. Oh. That looks very different, okay? So my guess is my prediction would be different, right? If I knew I was in that column, I would probably predict the middle row. If I knew I was in this column, I would predict the top row. My prediction changes depending on what column I'm in. And the same thing would work with rows. If I knew I was in the top row, I would go with the third column. If I knew I was in the middle row, I would go with the first column. And I guess if I knew I was in the bottom row, I would definitely go with the middle column. If I didn't, definitely don't go with me to Las Vegas. Right? So, um, and, and, and so these are really, they're all related, just the data will look differently. You know, and by the time we get to module four, chapter three, We'll be counting things because we'll have categories. Uh, then when we move to um, module five or chapter four, uh, we will have categories for our explanatory variable. The, an example I use a lot for that is like, uh, suppose you were testing fertilizers, right? You know, I might try fertilizer one on part of this field and, you know, part of another field and so forth. I try to do some random uh, sampling kind of thing. Um, use fertilizer two, use fertilizer three. 
but that's categorical, right? Because who, which fertilizer is which? Now it could be that it, they're ordinal, because I that my fertilizer the only difference might be how much nitrogen I put in them or how much potassium or something like that. But more likely they're just mixtures, and so whatever order I choose is fine. Okay, but then how would I measure the effect? You know, how would I measure the response? Most likely things like bushels per acre. You know, something like that. Well, that's numerical. Okay, so, so um, something, you know, like that in uh, module five, you know, things like testing different cleaning agents to see how much bacteria they killed or something like that. You know, so um, you, could, you could do that and then, uh, you know, categorical, uh, definitely we'll, you know, just because of, it's the data we have, we'll do a lot of stuff with gender, okay, so that's categorical. Um, and then, uh, so gender is one variable, does it explain uh, other stuff? Uh, I'm not thinking any particular category right now. But, uh, movie preference, how about that, movie preference. Does gender explain movie preference? Or at least not, I mean, the explain is kind of a, you know, it's explanatory variable, but you gotta be a little careful there. It's not usually a causation, right? It's just an association. All right, well, I see that we are out of time. And uh, so I will, Turn that baby off. <laughs>